What's happening guys? It's TJ. LSU Dad. Welcome to a breaking news edition of SEC News to Me. And this definitely is a breaking news edition because we got some breaking news. Well, TJ, what could be so big that you would cut in around dinner time, man? You normally do this on weekends and once or twice. Here's what's so big. The state of California has just ruled that it is okay. It's 100% acceptable and legal for student athletes in the state of California to earn money and revenue from their likeliness. This um, bill, um, Bill 206, right, also gives the student athletes the right to retain an agent to negotiate for revenues and royalties from their likeliness. Of course, of course, the NCAA is losing its mind right now. <clears throat> and NCAA fired off a letter of protest um, to the um, California governor saying that if he signs this bill, it, it's going to actually penalize the, the schools in California, uh, making those universities ineligible um, for any collegiate activity that is under the auspices of NCAA. And of course, California fired back, right? The author of the bill said, if the NCAA um, makes any attempt to punish, penalize any of the student athletes or the actual institutions, then they will file any trust um, legal paperwork against the NCAA. So here we finally have a showdown. The showdown that we have been wanting for so long. This is the first, the first kink in the armor of NCAA because it sets the stage. It's going to provide a legal precedent, right? And other states and institutions will be able to look at this California bill or even lobby their own state legislators to draft a similar bill in their state. And the moment that begins to happen, it pretty much takes all of the bite out of the fangs of NCAA, right? Now, it's important, right, to mention this. The NCAA is saying that if this bill goes into effect, then it destroys amateur athletics because it creates an unfair recruiting a scenario for all of the schools out on the West Coast because those schools, those students will be able to receive payment. And payment is just so bad. It's so horrible for a student athlete to receive payment. Mind you that the original purpose of the NCAA wasn't television contracts, wasn't this chokehold over all of these institutions. The original mission statement of the NCAA was simply to guarantee the safety of the players. That's all it was. And now it has evolved into this big, monstrous, non-profit, for-profit thing. Guys, did you know, um, 2017 going into the 2018 year, the NCAA um, posted $1.1 billion of revenue. $1.1 billion. It's also important to mention that that's after they paid the institutions. That's what they cleared. That's what went into the bank. And you would ask, well, where does that money go? Who's getting a cut of that? <clears throat> not Southern University in Baton Rouge, not Grambling, not Jackson State. There's no profit sharing for these institutions. As a matter of fact, whenever those institutions are fined by the NCAA, they have to pay cough up money that goes into this, that contributes to this $1.1 billion purse. In fact, state college coaches are actually the highest paid public employees in 39 states. Over the course of his college coaching career, Urban Meyer has an astonishing 61 to 6 record. Beyond that, he is also one of only three coaches to win a college football national championship at two different universities. The only basketball coach in the top five, John Calipari, has produced dozens of NBA superstars over his time at Kentucky, making him one of the best recruiters in amateur athletics. 
Jim Harbaugh received a hefty payday to move from the pros to the college ranks. But we're guessing Michiganians don't mind the cost. In just three seasons with the team, he has already vaulted the Wolverines into national championship contention. Joining Urban Meyer as one of the three coaches to win championships with two schools, Nick Saban became the highest paid coach in American sports this year by renewing his contract with Alabama. Over his decade with the Crimson Tide, he has led his program to four national championships, which is impressive to say the least. For those keeping score at home, all 50 governors in the U.S. only earned a combined $6.9 million. There should be some kind of compensation. The NCAA has even fought my suggestion three years ago of allowing student athletes to pull down work study. They were against that too. And some would say, well, TJ, the kids are getting a free education. So that is their pay. And I'm sitting there saying, well, you can go to some colleges off of a Pell Grant, like Delgado, Suno, Southern University of New Orleans. You can go there pretty much on a Pell Grant and a paycheck. So this idea that they're really doing something for the students is it's ridiculous. A lot of these students, a lot of them, would actually qualify for additional scholarship money. So this old excuse, this old it's going to destroy amateur athletic state. That's what a monopoly chokehold is. And so, and that's where um, the senators in California, that's where they can actually make this argument that this is an antitrust. This is a monopoly that should be broken up. It's a for-profit profit corporation that's in disguise, uh, dressed up in the clothes of a nonprofit. But I wanted to just cut in and say, Congratulations and thank you, California. Next up on SEC News, breaking news. Nick Saban said this. So we're playing the best teams that we can get to play us. Why, why don't you start calling around and see if you can get somebody else to play us and okay. we'll play them. We'll play anybody you can get to play us. Okay. So we're playing the okay. best teams that we can get to play us. Okay. Mr. Saban, meet UCF. UCF, I have the pleasure of introducing you to Mr. Saban. He said he'll play you guys anytime because there's not, it's not that he's going around picking the easiest schools like Citadel and Mercer. Those are just the schools that he can find who would want to play them. All right? And I think UCF took out a whole billboard saying, hey, let's get a game. No one returned your call. <laughs> so, I'm very proud. <clears throat> I'm very proud that this is in the news. Because I was the first one to really come out and start blasting um, these schools who are allowed to circumvent strength of schedule by scheduling the easy teams. And they're never penalized for it. They're never punished for it. So, they can go schedule all of these easy teams and still hold on to that beautiful, nice, crisp, shiny number two rank in there, right there in front of the helmet. That nice little, it has the crease in it from the spray starch, you know. It's, it's a really nice number two. They get to hold on to that thing. And at the same time, play the Citadel and Mercer and Bowling Green and Rice and whoever else that they could possibly drum up. And... So you just remember, Nick Saban said it, and being that he said it, I I can imagine right now, Mr. White, the athletic director at UCF, is making a phone call. Keep us posted, Mr. White. I would love to hear what when you decide to play. Let's get a one-on-one. -on -one. Nick Saban seems like he's ready for that, and I am certainly ready for it. Not that. I'm messy or anything because I do try to mind my business, but this is absolutely delicious. Guys, that's it. I just wanted to cut in with a real quick uh, SEC News Minute Brief. Yeah, I'm under the weather, battling in the flu. Thank y'all for being patient with me, right? And UCF, that's the only reason why I haven't done the video yet. It's because I can't get my voice together. But it's coming. It's coming. Before that next game. It's coming. That's all I got, guys. Thank you so much, and I'll check in with you 
later, or if some other breaking news, or if Nick Saban decides that he's going to play UCF tonight, I'm going live. 